So, oops. So dew point will happen if partial pressure in the air becomes, you get to that saturation temperature or go below it, and it condenses out of the air. So any, any state of air will have a dew point, as long as there's any moisture in the air, and in the real world there's moisture in the air. Even if this room was completely dry, all the air, there was no moisture in this room when we came into it, the fact that you're all sitting here breathing in dry air and then breathing out air from your moist lungs, you know, the, the, the dew point, I mean, you're breathing water into this. The actual humidity of the room is rising because you're in it right now. Um, so that's the dew point. There's three temperatures, room temperature, dew point, and then what they call wet bulb temperature. And that's if you take a washcloth and swing it around, that's a limit temperature it will go to. Yes? Just a yeah. general question, not specifically, I guess, but if you are, let's say, in a really humid place and we got a soda out, and then we have a really dry place and we got a soda out, of course, the one that has the higher humidity, are we going to get the droplets of water on the outside much much faster? Or more faster, more of it. It might be that a really dry place, like if, if you do it in the summer in one of your flats, yeah, Utah, Desert. Phoenix, okay. some place like that. It may not condense on the outside if it's dry enough, even in summer. Probably will, but definitely less than if you go to Hawaii and it's the same temperature. Definitely, yeah. If you're at the sh at the, the beach or something. At the same temperature, it'll probably condense fast. More water will come out of the air at that temperature. Because the rate at which it comes out, there has to be heat exchange going on. To, it's going to warm up your ice water glass because it's it's at its temperature, and now it's condensing, and it's dropping a pile of heat because it's phase change going on. So the rate at which that heat exchange can happen will determine the rate at which it condenses, and that <coughs> the temperature difference between the glass and the saturation temperature will be Part, part of that. Yeah. So um, here's a chart, the psychrometric chart. This is the Thursday quiz thing. So I got two days to talk about it. Um, you know, our last time we were talking about 25 degrees C and 75% relative humidity. And what's that look like on this chart? Here's uh, so this is plain old temperature called dry bulb temperature. This in here, this is the humidity ratio, and the humidity ratio was a mass to ma mass of water per mass of air. That's what's called specific sum. And the, what's specific to is a kilogram of air. So in this case, the units are grams of moisture, water vapor per kilogram of dry air, and there's <coughs> numbers of 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, um, up to 30. There's not a lot really in there. If you think about 10 grams per kilogram, what is that in percentage? That's like 1%. 10 out of 1,000 is 1 out of 100. So in this case, 1% of the mass of the air volume is moisture, water vapor. And at 20, it would be 2%. Well, so over here, go to 25 degrees C, come up to 75% relative humidity. I'm kind of halfway between these two points. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, six, about there. I can come back over here and say there's 14, 14 and a half. I'm on the 15 grams per kilogram of dry air. Um, now, the example we had said we had a room that was this big at a certain temperature. Um, so it would be one point, because I remember the last class you had the scale point so from zero to three? Zero to three. When it's uh, developed. Oh, humidity. Yeah, and that's 30. Um, it depends on how 
Yeah, the, the, sometimes it'll give you different numbers. On, like it'll this, this that could be like a point zero zero three or point zero three or whatever. Um, they also do this in, in grains. In the English units, they'll have grains of moisture, which is a really stupid one, but there's 7,000 grains to a pound. It's like, it's like the, the amount of mass of a grain, like a piece of wheat, and they, somebody counted 7,000 to an hour. Um, I'm just going to go with the, the ratio there. But, and this line here says, this is the enthalpy. How much energy is there in the temperature of the air, the temperature of the water vapor, and the phase change of the water vapor. Because if you have to condense the water vapor, there's a bunch of energy based on that. Um, if it was completely about the phase change of the water vapor, the temperature wouldn't matter, and these lines would be uh, horizontal. If it was completely about temperature, there's no phase change involved, they'd be vertical. So. This angle of this line kind of tells you if, if it was half and half, if it was a 45 degree angle, then it would be kind of half about the phase change and half about temperature. But man, these are, are way kicked over that way. So that sort of tells you that the slant of the line tells you how, how important the phase change uh, values are. Um, so at, basically at this point where we were, uh, the dew point on it would be if you drive the moisture at 15 grams per uh, 15 grams per kilogram and you cool it down until it hits this curve you're going to have the same value this doesn't change it's staying the same but you can cool it off so I'm going to find that point again if I drive, if I just cool it down, it will keep cooling down until it hits the curve, and that's going to be my dew point. Because now it's 100% relative humidity. If I cool it anymore, we have to lose, um, we have to, to lose moisture, to, to, and that means phase. That you have to, that's the stuff that's condensing on your glass. So in this case, at 20 degrees C, things are going to start condensing. Whereas if we're at um, 25 degrees C and only 30% relative humidity, that's Phoenix, you cool it down, it wouldn't start condensing until it got to um, five, now you got six and a half, so now this is the same five degree here, up here, um, so it's like six and a half degrees C, which is still, you know, ice water is definitely going to be down here at zero. So, but it won't cool. It, there's there's going to be bigger temperature difference. So it's going to it's going to be throwing more heat at your ice. It's going to be trying to melt your drink, and it's going to be condensing more water on it faster. Uh, come back up to this point. Uh, it's in five percent, fifty degrees C. And the slide over here, we decided our dew points twenty degrees C. Um, and now to find the wet bulb, that would be to take the same enthalpy and and force it to saturation. So we're gonna that's swinging the, the washcloth around in its vicinity. It's it's 100% relative humidity, and it'll go down to that. It's kind of harder to explain, but basically it's it, you take this point and take it with the same enthalpy. We're not adding energy. We're not taking it away. But as it vaporizes water. It's driving down the temperature to it's an isentropic value, and it's going to be um, let's see what was our 75 over here and um, 2021. It's like a 21 and a half degrees or something it would be. It's not 20 degrees. It's not 25. It's like 21 and a half would be the temperature it was swung something around that was wet. How the temperature goes to. So there's swamp coolers that are used industrially that that like actually like drip water on there and they blow air through it and the air cools down and it becomes more humid. So it works pretty good in Phoenix. It works pretty terribly in Atlanta in the summer because it's already 90% relative humidity. It won't have any room to vaporize. If you go to 
uh, outdoor concert in the summer. Anyone seen the big fans? They got water dripping on them. Or the misters overhead that are misting. That's taking the temperature and trying to drive it down by add the moisture. So as this goes up, you're increasing the moisture. So here's my point. I'm adding moisture going up in the scale there, and we're dropping the temperature. That's how they do it for that, like the outdoor things. In you know, if you go to the, uh, the gorge or something, concert, they're dropping the air temperature. But it's the same energy. The en enthalpy is the same. They're using some of that energy to vaporize the water, and then that drops. Top temperature drop is absorbed by the vaporization energy. So that's the wet bulb parallel there. So let's look at our our uh, thing that we did yesterday. We figured out 75% relative humidity because we knew what the saturation temperature was. Figured out what the density of um, the water vapor in the air was, what its volume, such a specific volume, and then use that to come up with 1.3 liters or uh, kilograms worth of water. It's another way we could go at it, and instead of looking at the water, we could look more like looking at the air. If I come over here, and I got 15 um, grams moisture per kilogram of air, now the question is how many kilograms of air were in that room? And then multiply it times this many grams of water per kilogram of air. Well, how many kilograms of air are in the room? These really steep lines are density of the dry air without moisture in it, based on ideal gas law. Um, and so we're steaming it way over here. Volume, cubic meter per kilogram of air. So it's actually specific volume. So that's a 92, 91, 90, 89, 88, 87, 86. And we are at this point. So we're kind of uh, between 86 and 80, 0.86 and 0.87 uh, cubic meters for every kilogram of dry air. 86. And I'm going to say it's a little bit over halfway, so I'm going to call it 0.866. So if we redo the, um, the example we had from yesterday, yesterday we were just looking at the water. And we took the R value of the water vapor. Calculate density, pressure divided by R, T, gives us specific volume. And we came up with this times volume of the room. Now we look at mass of the water vapor equals mass of the air times the mass of the water vapor over mass of the air. This is that, that right hand side, the humidity ratio, grams mm -hmm. of water per kilogram of air. So if I take the volume of air, Divided by the specific volume, which is on the chart, times my uh, humidity ratio, which is that right hand thing, get 75 cubic meters, 5 times 5 times 3, side of the room. Um, 0.866 meters cubed per kilogram, that was the number we just picked off the chart. And we decided we had 15 grams of water vapor for every kilogram of air that was on that side, and we multiply that all together, we get 1299 grams, which is pushing our luck because we really only have two digits worth of information here. Uh, but that's come compared to 1.296 kilograms, which is, I'm off by three grams, even though I was pretty much winging some of those numbers. So there's multiple ways of getting to the same point. But the point being that site chart, um, you didn't have to deal with the R values and conversions and all that stuff. It's a pretty neat trick. Um, some of the things built into the site chart, uh, there's 
There are different psych charts for different altitudes because there's different. The water vapor um, partial pressure is always going to be sort of a constant, how much water vapor you have, but the total pressure, total atmospheric pressure might get less and less. And, and so that, that chart starts sort of squish. Things, things change in that chart depending on what total pressure is. So I've seen these charts for sea level, which is I think one we're looking at is like sea level. So it's based on a total pressure of 101.325 kilopascal. And then you subtract from that the water vapor pressure, and that gets you the air density thing. And I've seen them for 2,000 foot elevation, 4,000 foot, 6,000 foot, 8,000 foot. Because, um, you know, here in Denver, mile high, you might better be using the 6,000 foot chart. What does that mean? Your atmospheric over, your total pressure is less. So the partial pressure of the water is proportionally more, and it sort of squishes the the scales on the chart a little bit. The water vapor thing stays the same. The total pressure changes. You know, even here, we're at 17. We should be using the 2,000 foot one to actually get, because you know we don't get 101 kilopascals. If you look, you know, when we're doing thermal things, it's like 95, 97 kilopascals is the actual pressure in the room here. So that's probably more like a 2,000 foot elevation. Uh, so, on this chart, if you're adding moisture, you're, you'd be going up. Yeah, generally, how that happens, so for instance, if I had low humidity, like right now, we're at something like 22 degrees, and I bet you we're less than 20% relative to humidity. And if, that means if um, if I chilled this all the way down, that would only start condensing right about freezing. And let's think about: it. is it raining outside? It's it's so it's less than 100% relative humidity. If you took that air and brought it in and heated it up, even if it was 100% relative humidity, you probably end up about where we are right now. And that's, this room is not humidified. If you look, there, there's a, uh, above the microwave in the back of the room, you look, there's a chart. It's, it's another, another version of this chart from a different company. It's got color, it's pretty. But uh, it also tells what the temperature and relative humidity outside are, and what the temperature and relative humidity inside are. And almost any day, if you look at that, if it says outside 10 degrees and 80% relative humidity, and you heat it up, it'll say indoors is, you know, like maybe it says 21 degrees, and then it's a 10 and 80. It's going to say like 21 degrees and 37% relative humidity. And really, what's happened? That same moisture they didn't add any moisture. It's the same value that you have. Same amount of moisture, but since you warmed it up, it's farther away from its saturation temperature. And that makes it a lower relative humidity, which means when I'm breathing it in and out, there's less moisture coming in as I'm breathing, and more moisture coming out, I dry out faster. And you can go ahead and dry out. So, um, When you cool something, just plain old cooling, it's going to go this way. If you plain old heat it, it goes this way. If your cooling goes far enough to get to that saturation point, you're not going to change the moisture in the air unless you saturate it. And then if you keep cooling, then you're going to drop some moisture out of this. And then when you heat it back up, it's going to be dehumidified. If you want to humidify something, you can overheat it and then spray the, the, the little mister nozzle things, and they will increase the humidity along that constant enthalpy line until you get back to the point where you want it. So you, you can predict how much you have to heat it, and then spray water, and it'll cool down to <coughs> some temperature. And then you know um, how much water to add to be able to measure your output 
And if the temperature is right, then you can stop spraying water, or it's the rate at which you're spraying the water, or what have you. Um, but basically, the only way you drop moisture is down the, the curve, cool it to that point, and then take it down the curve. The only way to, this, well, there's a couple ways you can humidify, but the easiest way to humidify is spray a fine mist, over, do an over temperature, and then it's going to, when you spray the fine mist, as it evaporates, it's going to drive the, um, It's going to drive the temperature along one of these enthalpy lines because you're not actually adding energy. You're not adding adding energy to the air. You're just adding moisture, and the moisture has to evaporate. It's going to cool it down at that rate. If you're heating something, you're not changing the moisture. It's heating would just be that direction. Cooling would just be that direction, and the moisture level doesn't change. Air itself, the composition doesn't change until you get over here, or if you spray liquid water into it. So, um, here's another. Oh, you know, do we have? I'll talk about this, and we'll we'll work it next time. If we identify a point, 35 degrees C, 40% relative humidity. The specific humidity is the vertical scale here. So you read that over here. That's gram per kilogram of air, gram of water dissolved. Um, here's the dry point, dry bulb temperature. The dew point temperature is the temperature at which that amount of moisture is in saturation. So it's a saturation curve. Dew point would be over here, that's where water starts condensing out. At constant enthalpy, the wet bulb would be following this from that point up to here. Enthalpy value would be, they're actually a little bit different, but they're pretty, pretty close um, on those lines. And enthalpy value would be the amount of en energy in that air. And um, Specific volume of, of the dry of the air would be at that super steep line. So we'll go over that one next time. All right. That'll do.